This is not an issue that you usually come to the public theater to hear about. So I just want to commend the public theater for taking this on and Lynn for writing an, an incredible play uh, because how do you put a human face to this story which is really the destruction of, of Africa's biodiversity and Africa's natural heritage. And there's been many efforts and I, for just for a moment I want to come back to America and come back to New York yeah. and Connecticut. Yeah. Because um, one of the things that's most amazing about this story is that, um, as Chelsea mentioned, that it was about 1.2 million, it was down to about 400,000. New York in the United States is one of the largest markets for ivory. Um, it has been historically. Um, and when I say historically, about 85 to 90 percent of all the ivory that Chelsea referenced that was being utilized for um, uh, ivory keys and things of that nature was actually processed in Connecticut in a town called Ivoryton. You should just think wow. about that. Wow. The way that ivory got there was on the back of African slaves that were brought from, that brought the ivory tusks from Central Africa to Zanzibar and then it was shipped to Connecticut. And then it was shipped from Connecticut after it was processed to New York City, to the Bronx and Queens actually, which is why you have something called the <laughs> Piano Factory in the South Bronx. They made the pianos there, and that was done with ivory. So we're all complicit to some extent in, in this story, and New York as well. And this is New York going back to the 18th century. 18th century, I'm going to, 19th century. I'm going to bring you to New York of last summer. Uh, last summer in Central Park, we actually were able to destroy $8 million of illegal ivory that had been seized in New York in approximately two years. So therefore, we oftentimes spend a lot of time talking about places around the world. We need to think about what's happening right here at home.